What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Shuggy from Shook Earth Media, and today we are here with a huge episode of The Walking Dead. This is a pivotal episode, especially going forward with the spinoffs next year. Today, we have the variants, finally. You can see it on screen here. We have a zombie climbing the rooftops, picking up a rock, and we pretty much confirmed that all of the walkers in Season 1 are variant walkers so it's a it's a huge plot twist and i think this is yet another amazing episode we have a really strong a storyline back at the commonwealth with eugene on the run and maxine as well on the run and all of our castmates being questioned and arrested and we have a really great b storyline with introducing the variants so i think that today's episode was really good and I'm super excited for the rest of the season, and we're just going to jump into going in order. But I just wanted to start with the variants because that's huge. So today's episode, yet again, started with a voiceover from Judith. Uh, this one focused on Eugene and th everything he's been through because he has a major decision point this episode. So, you know, you guys already know my thoughts on the voiceovers, but I like the word, you know, they're fo at least focusing it on... The character that has a big moment in the episode. I like that we pick up right where we left off last week in the chaos. And uh, somebody stops Eugene in the crowd and says, uh, you're the one who killed Sebastian. Which I find interesting. I don't know if she was a witness to the situation and saw... Uh, maybe we, I bet you could go back to last week's episode and see if she, you could see her in the episode. I bet you could. So there probably is a backstory there. So we start off right away. Eugene is under suspicion and that's the premise for this episode going forward. So picking up where we left off was really smart. And I like having Daryl come out of the crowd and save him when uh, he starts to panic because he's being recognized. So right after the credits, we are with Pamela and Sebastian and I really like the scenes with Pamela this episode. We're starting to unravel her a little bit. And we use this family tragedy to kind of speed up her story arc a little bit. So oftentimes in adapting The Walking Dead to the TV show, with the villains, they've tried to go more in-depth in understanding the villains. And you get to see the more human side and you get to understand things from their perspective. I think that's one of the strengths of the show is going a little bit more in-depth into that. And, uh, you know, we, of course, Sebastian never died in the, in the comics, so it, this situation didn't really happen, but I, I like to see more of Pamela, because we didn't get a chance to go that in-depth in the comic book, so. So in the comic book, the Commonwealth mostly exists as kind of a bookend for Rick Grimes' story, because it ends up being the, the final arc of the comic as well. So, uh, the, the governor... Governor Milton it kind of existed as an opposite to the previous governor. I like that they have her keeping her son alive the same way that governor the governor kept his daughter alive. So so I like that parallel between the two governors. So in Ro Rosita's getting arrested and Princess is getting arrested, everybody's getting questioned and uh, the, I, I love that we just jump straight into it. The pacing is really high. And that's at the beginning of the episode, the B storyline kind of feels like a, a, a stopgap in that. The B storyline kind of felt like, uh, at first, more like filler stuff, you know, because they, they're on their way to Oceanside to forward that storyline, but we're pausing. But we have a very good reason to do that because of this huge story concept that we have. And they, they pick good characters to do it with, and we have a drama between the different characters. So so I love the B storyline. The B storyline almost ends up overshadowing everything else, you know, because of how uh, good the ending of that is. And, I mean, we got fan favorite characters here. We got Aaron and Jerry. I was surprised nobody died this episode. What? Are, were you guys surprised as well? <laughs> this is the horde of variants that we see at the end of the episode. And here we get, uh, we've seen this shot in the trailers a lot, but a zombie who stops and then turns around and sees people going a different way, that's, you know, not how traditional Walking Dead zombies have operated thus far. So I think this is the same crew that invades the castle fortress thing at the end, but maybe not because there is some time in between it, although I, I suppose 
maybe they were waiting for night if they're if they're smart zombies i mean how far are we going with this <laughs> did they wait until night specifically because that they, they wanted to attack then who knows i mean at this point anything goes so i love this scene between a rosita and mercer and we don't get to see like you know previous episodes we've had kind of interrogation scenes in maybe this exact same room where we had a bunch cut together and, but this time we don't do that. We just do Rosita's because it basically it'd be the same conversation with everybody. So this is the one that has the emotional impact because we've been setting them up as two people that trust each other in, in the last two episodes. So th this scene I think is really effective and uh, uh, I love Rosita uh, standing up for herself. But of course, you know, you see things from Mercer's perspective in this episode too because you know, he's just trying to keep the peace, you know, and he, his argument in this episode is that things could be a lot worse, like going out in the wasteland is worse than living in a, a, a corrupt place. Um, so he's trying to minimize the amount of damage that's done. So, I, you know, I love all the scenes with Mercer. So Rosita comes to meet Daryl at uh, Gabriel's church and Eugene is here. They're all holding out. Uh, I, You know, I part of my the back of my brain is like, well, this was Gabriel's church. Gabriel came here with them. So you would think that the church would be under investigation too because they were looking at everything else. But you, got, you I, I could set that to the side. I mean, it's a good set. So I like these scenes back at the church. You know, we're setting up Eugene's guilt and the decision that he makes at the end of the episode. So instantly with the B storyline, the, the cart, of course, gets stuck. They're, they went to avoid the horde. And we all knew the cart was getting stuck. And uh, Jerry gets injured in the process. So, uh, you know, if we didn't have the variant storyline and this was just an, a, a stalling tactic for the plot, I'd be like, oh my god. But the fact that we're doing this because of the variants to introduce that, the storyline works for me. So, <laughs> well, I did think of the episode in Fear where the lady was changing a tire and she r runs over her leg or something. That, that did happen, right? <laughs> I really like this shot here, you know, going through the, the fence and whatnot. And I like the setting of some kind of Renaissance fair type of thing. Uh, the, the, the Kingdom 2.0, I love the shout out to that. Uh, the the thing going on with, with Lydia, I feel like has a really good payoff in her scene with Aaron, um, where she has a moment of hesitation because of a, the memory of Henry. And we set that up in the previous episode. And that's all on her mind and stuff. So, um, you know, I don't really buy into the relationship just because we never really knew Elijah too much as a character. But I, I, I love what's going on with Lydia, basically. So, again, these scenes with Pamela and Sebastian unsettling, you know, especially just focusing the angle on the bite and stuff. And it's it's a these are sad scenes. I mean, you you can't you kind of do feel for her in a way because i mean it is her son you know bit right there so so i really love the performance here and i'm really curious to see where it goes from here how this affects our character and here we got a uh, princess with mercer so that part of the episode works for me princess was a character even in the comics like i didn't really care for her at first but over time she's uh, grown on me you know so i kind of like having her around she's just like a uh, colorful just has her own like a little flair to the dialogue that scenes that she's in so i've enjoyed her thus far so and, and i like her trying to get mercer on our side basically and i think it will work ultimately and i really love this scene here because uh the the fact that it's the final season we're here with these characters we followed their journey for so long and they're taking real good care to make sure that they are uh, thinking about the totality of everything that they've been through so you know we had the scene with with daryl and maggie talking about uh leah and then about of course glenn and uh so I, I these scenes really work and we get at least one in every episode so we have uh lydia talking about the henry thing like we already said and then aaron uh talks about his relationship with eric so just, you know, reminding us of that. And he says that the happiest time in his life was uh, in Alexandria with, with Eric. So I don't know if he meant after the apocalypse, but to be honest, he kind of, they had it pretty good at uh, Alexandria for the start of the apocalypse. I'm not going to lie. So I can understand why he'd say that. So the message that he's trying to get across to Lydia as well. It's one of the themes of the show is that loss is a part of life. You can't stop living because of 
loss you've had in the past and that's like a recurring theme in the show these are like the best scenes you know in the past few episodes are these scenes referencing the past and usually in walking dead they kind of skip past talking about the past a lot because what's going on currently is more interesting than just recapping what already happened but um you know the fact it's the final season and bookending everything just makes a lot of sense so so here we see uh, Rosita catch up with Max just in time to watch her get arrested. So uh, I like the idea, you know, the near miss that we always get in, in movies and TV shows. You got to do that. But I, I do wonder why uh, Rosita wasn't arrested as well at this point. Because, you know, she's under suspicion being near somebody who is, you know, <laughs> there's a, a warrant out for their arrest and whatnot. And she just happened to be right there at that exact time. So that story's not going to track, you know. So I would have thought Rosita should get arrested here too. So, uh, you know, that's a little nitpicky thing. It's a good scene still. You know, that's just something you got to consider. And I love this scene here with uh, Mercer and Max. And, you know, Mercer has the fake statement. So Mercer wants Max to sign this statement that's just a complete lie about what happened and absolves her of responsibility and pins everything on Eugene basically and she's not about it because she wants to fight for a better world and whatnot and everything we went over last episode and wants to make the commonwealth a better place so she is um, going to take the the fall basically for it so here we get a fantastic Eugene and Daryl scene and I, I just, Daryl's part of this episode might be one of my favorites, even though he really only says a couple of things. But uh, you, Eugene's all in a huff, and he's like, I'm going out to get Maxine. And then Daryl's explaining he won't get very far. Eugene's determined to go, and he's going to fight Daryl to get there. <laughs> and uh, it's a comedic scene, and Daryl's just like, no, you're not going. And because you're smarter than that, basically. <laughs> and the dialogue was great. The acting was, was incredible. I love these characters. And then they, they have a conversation about uh, what makes a person courageous. And I think this was a great conversation to end it with. Sometimes in Walking Dead, we get uh, these philosophical conversations that feel a little forced. This does not feel forced at all. Like It makes perfect sense because he's thinking about turning himself in. And falling on the sword for Maxine, who is the one he's in love with at this point. The only caveat I have to say, I mean, it is Eugene. So it, it perfectly is in character for him to be, like, obsessed with Max at this point. But realistically, like, have they known each other that long? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. He was with the fake Stephanie longer than the real one, I think. <laughs> Although, I guess you could factor in the radio conversations. I guess that's a part of it. I don't know. It just feels like a bit much. But again, it is Eugene we're talking about. He's got that simp energy always. <laughs> always got the incel energy going. And then we get a conversation between Princess and Ezekiel. And this also fantastic conversation. Um, I gotta say, as far as Ezekiel's part of it, you know, he's talking about how he wants to stay, and similarly to Max, he, he wanted to stay here to try to make the Commonwealth better. You know, he wants to join the resistance, so to speak. So he is determined to stay. Uh, as far as his part, we, we knew that already based on his conversation with Carol. So this scene is just about what's going on with the Princess. Even Ezekiel doesn't really have any advice for her. So fantastic scene. I'm not, I don't know if I'm arguing to cut it out. It just feels like it, it could have been cut out and you wouldn't lose anything per se. It's character building for Princess. But we got a great scene. I love this dungeon hole that they have Lance in. And this is one of, one of my favorite scenes in this episode between Pamela and Lance. Of course, Lance is the one responsible for the death of Sebastian. But of course, it was unintentional. Now, he wanted to cause chaos but how could he predict that sebastian was the one who was going to get killed i think it would be fair to assume that sebastian would be protected and under normal circumstances he would have but keep in mind he was running out into the crowd after somebody and he didn't have his protection there with him so i gotta say i like how uh pamela's outfit looks like she has blood on it i think it's just jewels and stuff but it looks like splotches of blood on her so good costume design 
considering what's going on with this episode. And I like how we ended the last ep- the last scene with the body where she's nodding to one of the stormtrooper guys and telling him that to take care of her son. We assume that that means putting him down as a zombie. That's not what that means. So we get the reveal in this scene. Amazing reveal and the weird sexual tension between them. You know, I, I laughed out loud, but I, I think that's the kind of reaction that they want. I don't know. It does seem fitting of the characters in their relationship. It's a bit over the top, you know, and we kind of got the similar scene in a previous episode and I forgot to mention it in my review, but thankfully they did it again. So I get to mention it. I like the part where she reaches in the pocket. She brings out the coin and we know based on a previous episode, that's how he made a lot of decisions. So she's going to put uh, the fate of his existence on a coin flip. And then Sebastian is brought in and she becomes like the governor. Like I said, you know, keeping her son alive. So she brings in this guy who I think is the secret agent. I don't know if that means that the fake Stephanie also got got. So, you know, I love bringing in Sebastian and then she leaves him a, a blade. Yeah, that's just one of the best scenes in the episode. Absolutely love bringing in Sebastian in zombie form. <laughs> you love to see it. Here we got the kind of climactic scene with Princess and Mercer. And uh, she reveals a little bit more of her backstory. And this part is not from the comics or anything. So they're adding elements to her character. That she had an abusive upbringing. And a stepdad and a stepbrother who would lock her in the closet. She was set up as a character with a lot of mental struggles and stuff like that. So I think it fits the character. And uh, she ends the, the monologue saying that uh, because of that situation... She viewed men as monsters, but not Mercer. In one hand, she's always been like the feminist character. <laughs> but on the other hand, her backstory makes that totally understandable. Like I, I would totally have sympathy for somebody who felt that way because of the things that happened to her. I mean, that's like getting over that might take like decades or a lifetime. So I totally understand it. So ultimately, I, I sympathize with it, is what I'm saying. So the scene the scene worked for me. Of course, the main struggle is that Mercer's not doing enough to help Eugene and whatnot. So it's a relatable scene, a good drama scene. And here we get the biggest scene of the episode, the most exciting part. I'm sure it's going to be my thumbnail. <laughs> the variants are here, ladies and gentlemen. We have waited long enough. We've seen them in the trailers. We've seen them in the World Beyond se series finale. Now, of course, these are not the same variants that we saw in that series finale and we'll see in the upcoming Daryl spinoff. These variants are different. These variants are specifically made to shout out the first season and things we saw walkers do early on before they kind of figured out how zombies work. Um, so I really like this action scene and um, it, it may I really see what they're doing with the variant thing because... Um, as far as this franchise continuing on after the show's over, we need to make the zombies kind of a, more of a threat because uh, we're kind of in the comic series towards the end game of the zombie apocalypse, more or less. So if you want to keep the zombie apocalypse going for more story arcs, we need new things. And, and you know, it makes sense, honestly. And it, I like the action scene that we have here. But it, it makes sense because, you know, things grow and change over time. We don't actually know if it's a virus or what it is yet. I don't really buy into that as far as World Beyond goes. But um, my only caveat with the variants as far as the, the universe, TV universe, is in World Beyond, we heard nothing about it up until that post credit scene. We didn't hear about variants in the U.S., in fact, they had the guy at the CDC in Atlanta specifically say that he hadn't heard of any variant cohorts. And we're using season one Atlanta zombies as an example of variants to uh, set that up. And I, and I like that they connect it with the past, like, I was, like I've been saying, but they had the guy at the CDC nearby variant zombies and he didn't know about them. And we haven't heard about them in World Beyond existing and the scientists were there were specifically studying zombies. So you would think that they would know about that. So we probably should have seen uh, some hints of it in other things. But, you know, it makes for an exciting episode and we up the threat. Zombies are scary again. 
Um, the other fear I had with the variants is that um, once you go variant, you can't go back. And now all zombies are variants. But I think we're kind of doing that they're like self-contained pockets. And you shouldn't expect to see variants all the time, always. But um, I really like how Aaron assumes that there are whisperers around. And again, tying in the history of the show so far, that's his theory is that there are actual whisperers. And we have a big reveal on the rooftop when one manages to climb up and then pick up a rock. Now, the variants might seem a little bit too powerful with that. I mean, they can climb, not only wait until nightfall to make an attack, they can climb stuff, they can climb the, the roof, and then immediately recognize that that was a weapon he could use. They have to have that rock picking up thing as a shout out to episode two of the show. So I, I'm, liking, I'm liking the scene and the execution was amazing. So this is one of the best like kind of action scenes we've had in The Walking Dead in a while. The zombie horde feels very scary. So I love, of course, the reveal of him pulling off the zombie space. And of course, it's a real zombie underneath. This reveal was awesome, having Aaron's theory about the, the whispers. The execution of this was top tier. So I really like this scene. I do have questions about the variants still, of course. We've seen them climb. They can open doors. They can plan their attack. They can pick up rocks and use weapons. Lydia had a blade stabbed into one and they were like pulling it, trying to pull it out. So there's still a lot of questions about how far these abilities go and how smart they really are. So I'm curious if they do the variants wrong and it's just like all zombies are now variants and it kind of cheapens the franchise a bit. The Walking Dead at a certain point will become a different thing. It's all in the execution and how they pull it off from here. But the, this episode made me really excited about it. So I'm positive on the variants right now, but I have questions. So I like how they don't need to show us them killing all the zombies because we've seen that before. You know, we just kind of cut to the next morning. Um, I, I was shocked, no deaths in this episode. I, I assumed Jerry having the injury was gonna be a goner or maybe Aaron sacrificing himself for something. But no, not this episode. So I'm a little surprised. And, uh, you know, given this the final season, they got to kill off some people. So we'll see where it goes. I don't want them to chicken out every episode. But I'm, I'm not mad about it. I'm happy we still got Jerry and Aaron for at least another few episodes. And uh, here we got, you know, the, the end of the storyline with Lydia where, you know, she's got to seize the moment. You know, given that last night was like a life or death situation. You know, she got the new urgency in the in the discussion with Aaron. So we got a payoff there. Love to see it. And here we got Eugene deciding he's going to fall on the sword. And Rosita's telling him, like, they're going to kill you. It makes no sense. And honestly, like, I'm starting to think, yeah, like, I don't really think Mercer's going to let anything that bad happen to his sister. Whereas Eugene, they're definitely going to use him as the patsy. They're probably going to execute him. Or something like that. At least in jail for life. You know, he's he committed treason. So he's done. But uh, the sister, I think she would have been fine. Honestly, best case scenario was him leaving. <laughs> Maxine would probably be okay. He feels like she's has a better chance of being okay if he takes the fall for everything. So I can see where he's coming from as well. And uh, he's going to do the courageous thing. And I like it. But at the same point, it's like, Eugene, just go. <laughs> but I like that we give him a dramatic finish. Um, I, and I like his speech to Mercer here. And he, he knows how to talk to Mercer. He's doing a smart thing to convince him because he's like making sure that Mercer's sister is absolved of everything. So Mercer's going to go along with it. And we got Eugene in the cell, which we saw in the trailer. And then we get Rosita attacked. And I don't know if these are Lance's goons. And in the preview for next week, we saw uh, the kids are kidnapped and other people are kidnapped as well. So we have Lance's goons, I'm assuming, since he was let out in the jail scene there. Um, he, he, and he, his plea to Pamela was, you need somebody who's willing to do what it takes against your enemies. So he's taking drastic measures and now under Milton's banner, even though we thought he was down for the count, now he's doing uh, what he was going to do anyway so but now it seems like maybe he has new resources he has new people working for him 
or maybe it's another party kidnapping them. I, I find that less likely, but I would like to know you your guys' theories in the comment section down below. And uh, that's the end of the episode is Rosita gets kidnapped. She puts up a good fight, but I mean, it's two, two big dudes that are bigger than her. They can't, uh, she can't take them down. So that's the end of that. And the preview for next week looks amazing. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to seeing more of the final season. So I'm really pumped. I'm loving these episodes. We had some small criticisms here, little nitpicky things, but nothing big. I love where we're going with the season. I'm looking forward to the rest of it. And let's hope the rest of the season continues to be as good as this episode. And I, I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and sub for more videos and like and all that. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.